Hi, I'm Jonathan. Hi, I'm Haley, and we're super behind on <laughs> making our wrap-up video. We got too excited about making our TBR, so to the video. Hi, it's Haley. I'm sorry if the lighting is a little bit weird. I don't know what is going on with the sun through my curtains right now. Um, I'm going to try and make the camera move less during this video. I noticed during last month's wrap-up reviews that everything was kind of shaky. I'm trying to minimize that, but I do not have a, like, see, there it went. I don't have a tripod of any kind, so I've just kind of got this unique situation of pillows built up in front of me trying to study the camera. So, forgive me. Um, I only have one wrap-up review to do right now, and that is for the second book I read this month. It was my book club's choice for the month, which is Hunger by Almakatsu. Yeah, see, the lighting's really bright. I don't know if you can see. There, that kind of gives you a good look at it. Yeah, there we go. The pillow, kind of. I, so, I, I, I'm a big cover person. Like, I judge a lot by the covers of books. And I do not like the cover of this book. I really like everything, except I think the font is terrible. It really bothers me. I think it's a bad color choice. I think it's a bad design. But other than that... Uh, I really liked that book and I did not expect to. It is a historical thriller type book, like an alternative history thriller about the Don Donner Party. It's supernatural. I guess not even thriller. I mean, I would say it's actually horror, like legitimately horror. Um, and it is really scary. Like, I was so scared the first night I read it. I was hiding under the blankets with a book light on it trying to read because I was scared. It um, has this real creeping sense of dread, um, like something's following you, and I don't know. That gets to me, like more than 80% of different, I don't like that kind of stuff. I don't like whenever you as the audience can see the thing that the like person who's about to get killed can't see in a movie or a book. Don't like that. Um, or where you're in that point of view, like in The Woman in Black, it's got a lot of that. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it other than to say I found it very frightening and I mean, but that's what I was there for, was to be scared and it really worked. Also, I think that this author handled the time period with such grace and like acknowledged the like racism and sexism and homophobia without making it like a central tenet of the plot and like didn't erase people I don't know it was really good and I really like alternative history that like doesn't get bogged too much down in the history part like it's set in that time period it's not like trying to change each little bit of the story to make it work more it's just kind of the general tone and setting that is taken. It's really good. I gave it four stars. If you want to be scared, read this book. If you like morality tales, this is a great book. I would say if you like that movie, The Witch, you would really like this book. Um, and I guess that's all I have to say for now. Hi guys, it's Jonathan. Uh, another lunchtime reading wrap up. Uh, I just finished Metatropolis a collection of short stories edited by John Scalzi. Uh, so the story of how I ended up reading this is a little bit funny. I um, I was actually pretty much only interested in reading a short story, uh, Everything But the Squeal by John Scalzi. And I realized that it was a part of this collection of short stories and while the library didn't have uh, Everything But the Squeal in its ebook collection, it did have Metatropolis, so I checked it out and started reading it and realized all these short stories were in a shared setting and all kind of built off each other and I didn't want to miss out on the world building so I started reading them all. Um, I'm glad I did and didn't just skip ahead because honestly <laughs> everything but the squeal while it was good and funny like I hoped was uh, not really the, uh, like it had the least impact on me I think of any of the stories in it. I really liked this collection. Um, it's a uh, kind of eco-punk near future dystopia thing about uh, the way you know cities and people living in and around them adapt uh, 
to climate change and all that sort of thing. I, um, I was really surprised by it. it. It had a real, like, I don't know, anarcho-communist vibe to it with a lot of the stories. Uh, guerrilla reclamation of abandoned buildings in Detroit and just... It, it was really interesting, it, and the last story, while it probably had the least to do with the theme, uh, was the most mind-blowing when you finally realized what it was building up to, uh, and I really enjoyed it. I, I definitely recommend this to anyone who likes eco-punk with maybe a dash of hopefulness, so check it out. Okay, this is going to be super short because Jonathan is putting the baby down and then we're going to film an actual video. So I'm just really proud of my wrap ups and I need to do one. Um, this is like, I don't know, the third book, fourth book I read this month. I haven't kept any track really at all. It's the butch, it's upside down too. The Butchering Art by Lindsay Fitz, Lindsay Fit, Lindsay Fit Harris. It is also going to be extremely full of like random things I have to get rid of. Um, mess ups, whatever you want to call them. Um, and I gave this book like three stars and a lot of that is because I found the writing a little bit boring. It wasn't like terrible but also wasn't fantastic and even though it's like my preferred subject I had a hard time getting into it though as you can see I did tap it up a little bit. I borrowed it from the library for research purposes so it was still useful to me. Um, I think that my biggest problem with this book though is that it would like make a big deal about calling out some ethical issues in medicine at the time and then do things like mention Marion Sims as a like influential surgeon and obstetrician and not mention the fact that he was doing his experiments on slaves. It was not cool. I was very upset by it. Um. That said, maybe she did mention it, but the problem is that it was in notes, which you already know that I have a huge problem with. Like, it was in notes, and then also they were not properly noted within the text. And I don't know if this is just a different citation technique that I am not used to reading, but I did not like it because I couldn't have found if she had mentioned it in her notes without reading the whole freaking set. Who was going to do that? Not me. Hi, it's Haley, and I'm going to film my wrap-up reviews of the last two books I read this month. I don't know how many I read this month. I'd have to go back and count. Um, I don't think it's been a particularly good reading month so far on volume. I think I... I've only read like four books, but two of them were much denser and more difficult than books I normally read, and one of them was quite long, and I think that sort of bounces out a little. Also, not every month has to be like a great reading month, right? You have to read like a million, and more importantly, I had two books that I really loved reading this month, and one that was pretty good. Actually, two that were pretty good. So. The last two I read, one of them was a birthday gift from my mother-in-law, and I really, really love it, and that was Children of Blood and Bone by Tony Yemi. I got the, like, special Barnes & Noble exclusive version with all the pretty silver embossing type stuff. I really liked it. I think I gave it a four star on Goodreads. I might have given it a five star. I'm bad at remembering. Um... And I think it was really, really good. It got suggested to me like a million times from people because I liked Akata Witch so much. And honestly, I like Akata Witch a little bit better, but only because I really love that like sense of wonder about it. The thing I like about this book is that it's like intricate and like tricksy and you really get to like get into the characters and explore them. Um, I'm really excited for the next book in the series because I assume there's going to be more. That would be quite a cliffhanger if it wasn't. Um, 
because I want to learn more about the like magic system of this world and more about the like general setting because I really enjoyed exploring the characters but like I'm so interested in Orisha and all the things I really like the Lepinaires and Lionaires and things like that those are interesting animals like I'm imagining big horned like lions and leopards but a little different like saber tooth lions and leopards I don't know and that may just be in my brain but in my brain it's pretty cool um it's a beautiful heartbreaking story I cried like twice when I was reading it and I honestly like I know a lot of people are like well it's overhyped so it's probably not very good no it, it deserves all the hype it's getting you should read it um, and I would recommend going and buying a copy because the dust jacket is beautiful. Um, if you haven't seen it, honestly, just look it up. We're not going to put it in here because it's everywhere right now. And, like, the naked book is really beautiful if you get the Barnes & Noble copy. I don't know if it's this way everywhere else, but look at it. Like, it is worth having on your shelf. And who doesn't need a little bit more, like, African fantasy? It's great. Afro fantasy? for futurism could it be afro fantasy i don't know but i do recommend that book it deserves all the hype it's getting and i really liked it a lot um i'm trying to think if i had any like problems with this book and the only thing i could think of is not even really a problem other than i wanted more i could have read a book twice as long and i would have happily i know that would be an outrageous length for a book but i would have read it okay that was a really long review i'll try and be shorter with the next one which should be easy because it was a much shorter book. Um, the next book I read was Fly on the Wall by E. Lockhart. Um, this is not the cover I originally saw for it. It was like pink silhouetted fly, like hot pink. Um, and it was recommended to me uh, because I like retellings of weird books and it's a retelling of Kafka's The Metamorphosis and it's really interesting. It's not a superhero book, but you might think so. But looking at this, it's not. Um, and I think I gave it a three star, but I would have given it a higher star if I had been in high school, I guarantee you. Like, I would have really loved that when I was in high school or, like, junior high. Um, it is super interesting reading. It's so fast. I read it in two hours. Like, I just sat down and read it, and I hardly ever read a book in single setting anymore. Um, super fast to read. Uh... My biggest problem with it was that they kept referring to penises as gherkins and breasts as biscuits, which maybe they had to do because it's a little bit older and I feel like there was a time period where like why books were much cleaner than they are now, frankly, and uh, maybe that's why, but I don't think so. I think it was like discomfort on the author's point and I did not like that. Please don't do that again. Um, Especially because, like, seriously, there's a section where they have to refer to penises like, penises, like, 50 times in one page. So it's just, like, gherkin, 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 gherkin. It's ridiculous, and I could not take that seriously. But other than that, it's really brilliant, great representation. There are lots of characters from different backgrounds, and it is very much about, like, not forgetting that you don't know about other people's interior life. I don't know. It's very interesting and I would recommend it. Hey folks, it's Jonathan. Hey, I am doing another lunchtime reading wrap up and this time it is Blackfish City by Sam J. Miller. I was really blown away by this book. It surpassed my, my expectations enormously. Uh, I sort of expected it to be silly and light and a little cartoony and it was anything but. Uh, the basic premise is it's about a city, a floating city in an ecological dystopia that is high up in the Arctics and is just racked by wealth inequality. So there's the poorest of the poor living in slums and the ultra wealthy landlords running everything. And the story starts with a woman uh, sailing into town on a boat towed by an orca with a uh, polar bear at her side. Uh, and call her an orca mancer. Uh, it's. I, I really don't want to talk too much about the plot because it's. I don't want to spoil things, but also. Just, I mean, the real star. This is the city. the The world building is great. Uh, it's. Just a fantastic 
uh, beautiful portrait of this place and people living in it. Um, it's very serious and dark and moving and it's just full of a degree of poetry, I guess. I really, like, I just really liked it. Um, it has a lot to say about uh, I mean, capitalism, I guess, and the villains of the story, uh, I don't think it's really spoilers to say, are the, the landlords just crushing everyone beneath ever-mounting rent, uh, which was just fun to read. Um, no, it's, it's, it's a really great read. It's also super uh, queer-inclusive. Uh, there are a, a lot of uh, just varied characters, and I don't really want to mention all of them again because I'm trying to avoid spoilers here. But it is just uh, a really fantastic read, and I strongly recommend it to anybody who likes dystopian fiction. I think you'll have fun with it. Hi guys, quick wrap-up for A Darkling Plain by Philip Reeve. Uh, it's the conclusion of the quartet, so it wrapped up a lot of the existing plot lines. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think it was my favorite of the quartet. It was the one that most seemed like it knew where it was going, and uh, I had a lot of fun with it. It definitely brought a satisfying conclusion to that setup. Um, so yeah, I recommend that series. And that's all the videos. So, uh, links to all the books we talked about be down in the doodly do along with links to our goodreads our social media if you like the video give us a thumbs up Thanks. uh yeah i was gonna say subscribe <laughs> probably something about commenting yeah i've got a script no i don't i've gone off it. script anyways like comment subscribe yeah.